Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So last time we talked about how everything around us gives us information. How everything from a book to a Tervis Tumblr has information and is giving it to us. But how has that information changed through time? So what I mean by that is that what kinds of information are we getting every day, weekly, living through? Where is it coming from? How are we getting it? How quickly are we getting this information? How important this information is to us? And how are we storing that information? So if I take this, and I'm going really broad stroke now, like think of the primitive man. So he needed information like where's the best hunting grounds? Where's the good water source? Where's the place to shelter at night? Or maybe when a storm hits, that next tribe over and the next group of people over, are they hostile? Are they somebody they can trust? So these are stuff they need to know. And how are they getting that information? Well, orally. They're getting it through song. They're getting it through talking. And they're getting it through listening to stories. But it's also being maybe written on cave walls. So that's how they're storing their information in their memory and in the cave drawings. But how quickly is this information getting to them? Pretty darn slow because it's all word of mouth. And then again, how important it is for them to have this type of information. Extremely important. Now as we move through time, again, broad strokes here, think about the Westerner, someone who came and was homesteading. And I'm thinking about somebody, and this is referring to the exercise you'll be doing at the end of this, is that think about someone who was a homesteader and they had the horse and buggy, the telegraph, but there was no electricity in their place yet. And so what kind of things did they need to know? And I'm thinking of like someone who's a farmer. So they were looking at, they need to know water rights. They might be looking at the almanac to know the weather, what predictions are going to be made. They need to know their property boundaries. And then how are they getting this information? Well, I mentioned the almanac, but then also they might be getting letters from family members talking about Sally had a baby boy, or they're talking about they went to some barn dance and how much fun it was. So some of that information is important for them to know and to be able to survive. We all know the food, water, shelter. We all need that no matter where we are in our time. But the information for them is still going pretty slow. It might be coming across the telegraph, but it's not going that fast. And the amount of information is not that much because you can only send short bursts through a telegraph. Letters, so many pages. They don't have a lot of paper, they have a lot of paper, but still it's not that much information. And how are they storing it? Again, orally, they might be saving the letters. There might be ledgers now. So you're starting to have the written book. And how important is this information? A lot of it still very important to survive. But as we keep moving through time and think about, I'm gonna just jump to today. Where are you getting your information today? Everywhere. You're getting it from the internet. You're getting it from your phone. You're getting it from a book, a journal, magazine, TV, everything. And how quickly is this information getting to us now? Instantaneously. So some of this information that's coming to us, you're on a Twitter feed. How important is it to know that that famous star was found drunk in a bar? Not that important. We don't need to know that in order to survive. But you're getting this information from your Twitter feed, your Facebook post. You're getting it from me. You're getting it from the internet. You're getting it from all over the place. How do you weed through all this information? Well, that's part of what's gonna happen in this class, is that hopefully we can do is we can learn the skills to weed through all the different places information is coming from and determine what's the best source. What's the best place to get it from? Is this reliable enough? So information through time started out with basic needs. Our basic needs haven't changed, but the amount of information we were getting a long time back was very small because it was just oral bits of information. And as we keep moving through time, more and more information keeps getting added on. As we go through plays and shows and then newspapers and journals and advertising, and we get to today, and it's just incredibly overwhelming. So hopefully throughout this class, that's what we're gonna get through. So now you're gonna head over to the exercise and I'm having you actually compare a homesteader from the 1880s to someone who's living in the city in the 1880s. And then you're gonna also compare the person who was born during Madonna time and Michael Jackson's thriller time compared to the millennial child of today. So you'll see the questions, just go through the exercise and we'll move on from there. See you guys later.